This is a discussion of the differences between the SI and US systems of units. Because although all fundamental physical relationships are the same across the two systems, the units used are not. The fundamental SI units, the ones used to define all parameters, are kilograms for mass, meters for length, and seconds for time. All hydraulic parameters can be defined in these units. So for example, mass flow has units of kilograms per second and volume flow has units of meters cubed per second. Looking at the fundamental properties of the fluid itself, density has units of kilograms per meters cubed and viscosity, which is a pretty important parameter in fluid dynamics, has units of kilograms per meter per second. Now, let's look at the key derived SI units. These are the ones based on the fundamental SI units and which define other key parameters, such as force, which is mass times acceleration. So a Newton takes units of kilogram meters per second squared. Pressure is force divided by area. So it takes units of kilograms per meter per second squared. That's a Pascal. Energy in joules is force times distance and so takes units of kilograms meters squared per second squared. And power is the change in energy with time. So a watt is a kilogram meter squared per second cubed. And these parameters are all interrelated. For example, volume flow is mass flow divided by density. Power, as well as being energy over time, also has the same units as flow times pressure, which means that pressure is power divided by flow. Viscosity is defined by the stress per unit velocity gradient. While well, stress is a type of pressure and so takes units of kilograms per meter per second squared. Velocity gradient is the change in velocity with distance. So it takes units of velocity, that's meters per second, divided by distance in meters. So that's meters per second per meter, which just leaves inverse seconds. So viscosity is pressure divided by inverse time, which is the same as pressure times time, which gives units of Pascal seconds, which is the same as kilograms per meter per second. Now, because engineers prefer quantities without exponents, i.e. nothing with 10 to the minus or 10 to the plus something, then in practice, other derived units are used. The volume flow is often expressed as either liters per second or meters cubed per hour. So a thousand or 3000 times larger than the meters cubed per second unit. Pressure is expressed in bar, which is 100,000 pascals or 100 kilopascals. And energy in terms of the kilowatt hour, which is 3.6 million joules or megajoules. And this is just because the pascal and joule are very small quantities indeed when it comes to practical water applications. So summing up, when using the SI system to define parameters in water process calculations, they're all ultimately expressed in terms of three units, the kilogram, the meter, and the second. Now let's have a look at how the US units work based on the same thinking. Now it's not altogether clear which unit should be chosen for the three fundamental parameters, but let's go with pounds for mass, feet for length and seconds for time. Now this being the case, for the fluid properties, mass flow would take units of pounds per second, volume flow units of cubic feet per second, fluid density pounds per cubic feet and viscosity pounds per foot per second. The first thing to note is that subscript M for pounds. That's because there are two different sorts of pounds in the US system, which we'll come to later. For the derived units, again, based on the fundamental units of pounds for mass, feet for length and seconds for time, force would take the units of pounds feet per second squared. That means that pressure, which is still force over area, would take units of pounds per feet per second squared. Energy, that's force times distance, would be pounds feet squared per second squared and power, that's energy per unit time, pounds feet squared per second cubed. All consistent, all good, mirroring the SI system, 
except that's not how it works at all in the US system of units. For the US system, volume is measured in US gallons and flow normally in US gallons per minute. A US gallon is 0.134 cubic feet. Density, if not expressed as specific gravity, the density with reference to water, is expressed in slugs per cubic foot, where a slug is 32.2 pounds. So this has to be converted to appropriate units for the density to allow volume flow to be determined from mass flow or vice versa. Now, back to that pound. In the US system, the pound can be pound mass or pound force. Force is then expressed as pound force, which basically means ignoring the acceleration component and assuming that the pound always acts under the Earth's gravitational field. Well, this is a fair assumption, but it's still a little confusing. Pressure is then given in pounds force per square inch or PSI. So here, area is being expressed in terms of square inches rather than square feet. Energy takes different units according to the application. If mechanical, it can be feet times pounds force or horsepower seconds, more of which later. If thermal, then the BTU, British Thermal Unit, is used. And a horsepower second is 0.707 of a BTU. Power is then pounds force feet per second, but is normally expressed as the horsepower, which is pounds force feet per 550 seconds. Now power is still pressure times flow, so pressure can therefore still be expressed as power divided by flow. But since flow is usually in US gallons per minute, a correction factor of 1714 has to be applied. Finally, viscosity can then be expressed as pounds for seconds per square foot. It's still pressure divided by velocity gradient, but the units for area have changed back to square feet from square inches. So, although the interrelationships for the SI system still exist, in the US system of units, because they're based on the same immutable physical laws, the US system employs more than a single unit for each parameter, both inches and feet for length, BTU and horsepower, seconds for energy, etc. And because of this, there are a number of empirical correction factors required, which can be a little perplexing.